So this is a topic that I'm sure you have all heard about it a lot and a lot and a lot. It's, I rarely go to any conference or I attend a conference and there is not a, a topic about the manners of Rasulullah And the, the topic was which part of the life of Rasulullah that impressed me or that I want to highlight. When I was reading the title, I was like, which one is not? Which part of the life of Rasulullah when you really read it, not read it just, okay, I know, I'm just reviewing. When you really read and say which one, and you take one incident, one incident, one incident, like let's take one incident with a, a non-Muslim, take an incident with his wife, take an incident with somebody he doesn't know, take an incident with his friends, and it's like which one doesn't impress you? And it doesn't impress you. It has to make you at least say, whoa, wow. And who is he? Alayhi salatu wasalam. And I think all Muslims, all, wherever we are, share a common love to Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. And I can speak from the woman's side when we are in the rawda. When finally we get into the rawda, and all those of you who have been there, you know what I'm talking about. And the emotion you see it on the ladies, this is not a faked emotion. It's, it's, and there's nothing, I mean, when we are in the rawda or the woman area, we don't see anything. It's not like the men side. We see nothing. We only see just like a white fence. And not now, alhamdulillah, it's much less crowded, but before it used to be extremely crowded. Still there is these emotions. And nothing stunning, and you, you say to yourself, what is it? It's the love we all have to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All Muslims are still the same. But there is one or more than one issue for us Muslims in our relationship with the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The last session I was talking to the ladies and I said, and I focused on the relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now since the topic is, it's what's the relationship, with our relationship with the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love is there. So, so don't think of love. Love is there. No one can at all question or argue about it. But the question I have to everybody and what I want to share with you is, this love, is it translated to what? These feelings are translated to what? And I'll give you an example in our daily life. Whenever you want to understand something in the deen, always think of something in, the li in life. And then see. So when you have someone who loves you, young and old, parents or students, somebody loves you. What is the sign that this person loves you? And I would love to hear from anyone. What is the sign that this person really, genuinely love you? What is the sign? Uh, I'm sorry? Actions. Uh, specify. That's what I'm looking for. What action prove, prove, without a doubt, and even sometimes you say, what else I want to do to prove it to you? What is it? Praise, okay. Uh, uh. Sacrifice for that person. You give the thing you love for that person. That's one. Definitely, you tr trust is not love. I'm talking about love. Love. Sincere love. Obedience, you do whatever they tell you. Sometimes doesn't make sense, but I love them. And look at you parents with your child. If your child coming from the university, coming home after six months, right? What is the first thing parents do? The mom is cooking something that child, that student, she or he loves, because they love it. And you smile, and it doesn't matter if this takes forever. Right? And the daddy will go and do something because the, my son or my daughter loves it. The sign of love is actually obedience. And Allah said this in the Quran. Anyone can give me the verse. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Say, if you love Allah, Follow me. Me is a Rasul And the result, يُحْبِبْكُمْ Allah. Allah will love you. And Allah will forgive you. And Allah is all forgiving, all merciful. 
this sign, each one in this room, young and old, man and a woman, brothers and sisters, that you love Rasul We live in, what's the name of this state? I know, what is the name of this state? Show me, show me state. I was talking to my family, my sisters in California, and says, what? And I said, yeah, it's called show me state. Why it's called show me state? Don't answer me, Google it, but you will find out. Show me, meaning show me. And I'm so worried about me. I'm not talking about you. You all are definitely better than me. That a Rasul on the day of judgment, and he will say to me, show me, show me your love. In my book, where is the love that you had for me, that you claimed you had for me? Fattabi'uni, follow me. What does follow me mean? Do something he did. Let's take simple ones. Simple ones he did. Who can give me one thing? You all know about the Rasul You don't have to read the seerah. You don't have to listen to long YouTube. One thing the Rasul did. Tell me, anything comes in your mind. I'm sorry? Give me act, not a character. Act. Smile. This is one. He used to be described. He used to be described that when he talks to someone, and this there's a couple of things in his seerah, and I focus on his daily life that literally astound me. I was like, Ya Allah, make me this one. I don't think I can do it. It's very simple. When he was described by the Sahaba, when he talks to someone, they all say he talks to him or her as if there's nobody else in the room. Give them their all attention, his all attention. And he's a Rasul, and it doesn't matter who is that person, young or old, famous, rich, poor, speaks the language, doesn't speak, it doesn't matter. And look at us, when we get into a gathering, how do we greet people? We have categories, do you know that? I know her, she's my friend, or he's my friend, or he's my boss, uh, I will need her, I have something to do with her, and it is accordingly. And some people we don't even pay attention to, as if they are non-existing, especially if they are, quote unquote, less than us, in my standard. So number one, number one, his relationship with the people around him. I'm not talking about the relationship with Sayyidina Abu Bakr, the special relationship, or with Sayyidina Umar, or the Sayyidina Aisha. These are special. I'm talking about the general. What is the other thing they said about him? When he greets someone, he never, ever, was the first one to let his hand go. And he's a Rasul, When you greet, he keep greeting till that person pulls his hand. What is that sign of? Caring. He cared about every single person around him, not because they were from Quraysh, or they were in Medina, or because that was the person who will bring khair to Islam, or because this is his friend, or this is his father, uh, his uh, uh, father-in-law, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. No, because they were a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why when he was described, and you all know this hadith, كان خلقه القرآن. When Sayyidah Aisha was asked, how was he, because they wanted, the men wanted to know how was he in his home. They see him outside, but how was he at home? You know the dual personality many of us have? Outside we're perfect, when we go to home, Allah knows. Or when we go to our room, we are something, and when we are with our family, we are something. Not he, alayhi salatu wasalam. And they asked her, Sayyida Aisha, this hadith narrated by Sayyida Aisha. Who was he? And she said, كيف كان خلقه في أهل بيته? How was he with his family, meaning his wives? And this is the wife talking about the husband. كان خلقه القرآن. His manners, his demeanor, his speech, the way he talk, the way he walk. كان خلقه القرآن. Where are we? 
if you look at the other person he had daily contact with, not a woman, a man, in his house, Sayyidina Anas, he was his servant. When he moved to Medina, when he uh, migrated to Medina, Rasulullah sallam. When he arrived to Medina, the people of Medina they were so happy. Everybody gifted him something. And the mother of Anas, Sayyidina Anas, was ten years of age. She grabbed Sayyidina Anas and came to Rasulullah The meaning of I don't have much to give to welcome you. Take him, Ya Rasulullah, and teach him. What a gift. What a gift, not to Rasul to Sayyidina Anas. Go and live with Rasul He served him for how long? Who knows? Four zero. And some says ten, some says four zero. And this is what he said, Sayyidina Anas. Think of the people we deal with, whether they are friends, whether they are our bosses, or they are under us. And he said, I think it's ten years. I served the Rasul والسلام, 10 years. Never, he never said to me one time, single time, this is a young boy, 10 years of age, how many mistakes he does. Think of your children. And he said, for 10 years, he never asked me, why did you do this? And why you didn't do that? That's patient. When you said patient, absolutely, but in action. Why did you do this or why you didn't do that? And that's shahada. This is a testimony of someone in his house afterward, not when he was alive, afterward. Two, three. They loved him to the extent Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As was asked way later on when he became the governor of Egypt. They asked him, describe him to us. How does he look like? How did he look like? Tell us how his face was. And you know what he said? Does anyone know the answer? We never looked at his face. We could never look at his face. That's love. And that's what? Respect. Awe. Love. Respect and awe. A man does not look at the face of a man that they, he cannot describe him and they lived around him. And the famous story, which I'm sure some of you, when they went to the Najashi and they were, who is this man? And they said the meaning of that when he does wudu, when he performs his ablution, the Sahaba run to collect the money, the to collect the water from under it. Who was he? Who was he? And where are we in our relationship with him? Simple question to everybody. What was his sunnah in these days? What, what, where are we? Shaban. What was his sunnah in Shaban? Fasting, right? When Sayyidina uh, 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 Usama ibn Zayd came to him and says, Ya Rasulullah, I've never seen you fasting that much in a month after Ramadan. Why this month? Why Sha'ban? What did he say? Daka shahrun yaghfulu anhu nas bayna rajabin wa Ramadan. This is a month that people forget about because it comes between Rajab, the, the sacred month, and Ramadan. Everybody knows Ramadan. And I wanted to honor this month by fasting. And he used to fast, not all Shaban, majority of Shaban. Where are we? And everybody asked about the, the night of the 15th of Shaban. I can't tell you how many questions I had. At one point, I was like, there's nothing else in this deen other than the night of the 15th of Shaban. Should we do that? Should we do it? Is it bid'ah? Is it not bid'ah? And I looked at people and I say, why don't you learn about his sunnah? And do what he did in, in Shaban. He used to fast. And then he said, Wahada Shahr, and this is a month where the deeds are presented to Allah. And I love for my deeds to be presented to Allah when I'm fasting. Because our deeds are presented to Allah weekly, actually daily, 
weekly, monthly, yearly. Do you know that? Okay. Daily, it's presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala twice. The change of the shift time. When the angels change. The angels change before Fajr and before Asr. And they go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the angels of the night. And Allah asked them, how did you see them? We all have to have a good answer. They just left. We just prayed Asr. They just left. So that when they go to Allah, Allah says, كيف وجدتم عبادي? What did you see them doing? And they say, Ya Allah, we found them praying. Alhamdulillah. And the morning ones, the same thing. And this is the daily presentation. And there is the weekly presentation. And this is on Thursday. And that's why he fasted, alayhi salatu wasalam. Because fasting is the most beloved act to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fasting is for me. Allah is saying this. Not us. Not even the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. It's hadith Qudsi. Fasting is for me and I, Allah, the exalted, will reward for it. And scholars teach you the only deed that is not times 10. In fact, it's two. That what, it is not times 10. Who knows them? One is fasting. What is the other one? Related to fasting. It's patient, sabr. إِنَّمَا يُوَفَى الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ The people who practice patient let alone you struggle to be patient, you will be rewarded, unaccounted for. Fasting and being patient. So on Thursday, then you come the monthly, the month of Sha'ban. Then you come the yearly. What day our deeds will be presented to Allah? I'll leave this for you. Go and learn it. Go and learn it. This is what he did, alayhi salatu wasalam. He taught us, he taught us how much we practice. Everything I'm going to tell you that impressed me, and I'm saying this to myself before I say it to you, is not about what he did. It's about to me. Let me read to you this one because I want to read it because I want to, to give it its due right. Is when, you all know this, when he went to uh, the cave of um, Hira and Jabal al nur and then he come back and he heard Iqra, the angel came to him. When he came to his wife, and I want not only the brothers to think of themselves, but I want the sisters also. If this was the opposite, what will your wife say about you? And what will your husband say about you? And look what she said about him. And he came, you all know, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, uh, uh, put, I'm, I'm like, cover me, cover me. And he was telling her the story. And it is an overwhelming story. I can't even imagine. And what did she say? To him, Wallahi, inna Allah la yakhdil, la yakhdiluk. By Allah, Allah will never let you down. This is a wife talking to her husband. This is not a prophet yet. She doesn't even know that. She took him to, after it, she took him to Waraqa. But at this point, she doesn't know what's going on. This is a man came to his wife and says, this is what happens to me. I was in the cave, and guess what happened? Angel came to me, and then he was telling me this. Normally, what would we have said? Really? Are you sure? Is that how it is? See what she said. In Allah la yakhdiluk. By Allah, Allah will never let you down. Why? These are the criteria. These, I call it, the result is earned. I do and I get. We all want to get, but we don't want to do it. We don't want to put the effort to get the result. So what did he, what did she say? She said, فَإِنَّكَ تَصَلُ الرَّحِمُ You always, always take care of your blood relationship. It's not the one I love, or the one I like, or the one I need. Blood relationship. And I call it the non-negotiable relationship. I have no choice. But you don't know what they did to me. No choice. This is the first thing. That people need to know about me and you, let alone your close people to your life, your spouse, your, your husband, your wife, that you are a person takes care of people. Not because you need them or love them. Number one, tasidur rahim. 
فإنك تصل الرحم وتحمل الكل. You help those in need, especially when they and and you carry and you worry about their worries. These days, it's not my business. Why do I have to worry about them? Let me worry about myself. All of us is the society of I, 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 me, me, me. It's not the society of us, community. Kuntum khayra umma. You were the best nation that was sent out. No, it's all about me. Life is all about me. وتحملوا الكل. Does people say this about you? You worry about the other people? Don't worry, he is there. He will take care of it. Don't worry, she's there. She'll help you. Can I claim this? That's who he was. وتحملوا الكل. وتكسبوا المعدوم. تكسبوا المعدوم. The person who is in need. Not to carry his worries, but to help him wherever you can. Tuksibul madu. You give whatever. And I'm not talking about money. Anything. How many of us in this room follow this footstep that we help people before they open their mouth? We feel them. In college, tomorrow is a very hard exam. I know she is. She doesn't know this very well. Let me go and help. No. You know, I studied more. She needs to take care of herself. And put these examples. That's who he was before he became a prophet. I'm going to re-emphasize the point. He was not a prophet yet. Alayhi salatu wasalam. And وَتَنْصُرُ الْمَظْلُومِ And you stand up for injustice. Stand up for injustice. I'm not talking about the movements or outside. I'm talking about in our masajid, in our Muslim community. When we see injustice, what do we do? It's not my business. I am not the chairman of the masjid. I'm not the president. I'm not in the shura. Tansur al These should be my daily character. That's why kana khuluquhu al-Quran. You stand up for injustice in your home. Injustice with an animal. Injustice with the world. People laugh. Oh, you compose. Oh, you, you recycle. Don't use uh, plastic. That's Tansur al because we, we have done injustice to this earth. You all have seen the pictures of the plastics in the ocean and what happens to the animals. That's him. Let alone a human being who's going through injustice. Whether I see in the road, whether I see in the mosque, whether it's in my house. Injustice in my house. وَتَنْصُرُ الْمَظْلُومِ وَتُقْرِئُ الضَّيْفِ And you're so hospitable to the guest. And she didn't say who's the guest. Hospitable. He was a person, alayhi salatu wasalam, loved people because they are human beings. Because they are a creation of Allah. Because that's what Allah wants from him. Not because who, again, who they are, or they are my friend, or I love them, or I will need them. That's, again, that's what she said. That's the last thing she said about him. And you always stand up for the truth. Where are we from this? Stand up for the truth. This is a wife talking about her husband. How many of our spouses or say this about us, when we, in front of us, to us, and let alone behind us. That's who he is, alayhi salatu wasalam. And this is before, again, before he became prophet, and then the ones I started with is when he became a prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. There is way more, and I'm going to end up with this one. When this is a Sayyida Aisha, his wife, the younger one, this is in Medina, she described him. He said, she said, I will describe you, him to you. Give me your hearts. Even write this down. And, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The month of Ramadan is in two weeks. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make me this. I can't do it. We can't do it alone. We live in a corrupted time that every norm became abnorm. Every true become not true. And he predicted, alayhi salatu wasalam. He predicted that. Ja'a al-Islamu gharibah wa sayaudu gharibah. Islam came as a stranger, will come back as a stranger, place in Jannah for those strangers. May Allah make us among the strangers. Ya Rabbi Ameen. So she said, Lam yakun He never, ever looked down 
or called someone or find a fault of someone. Abada, this is what she said. Ahada, nobody. Look at us. We look at this. She's tall. She, he is this. She's that. Never. Wala yajzi ala su'i bisu. And never re retaliate or return harm or evil with evil. Never. This is his wife. Never. They say, what did they say about him? Go and read the Quran. What they did do to him? Go and read the seerah. Never. You all know the famous story of the Jewish neighbor who she used every day he leaves the house, she throw garbage on him. The day she did not throw garbage, what did he do? Knocked on her door, says, are you okay? See, we laugh. Because this is, uh, this is impossible. This is fairy tale. This is him. My and your uswa, example, that Allah asked me and you to follow him. فَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا The best example. So she said he never, never retaliate, respond evil with evil. But, كَانَ يَعْفُ وَيَصْفَحْ He always forgiven pardon. Always. And you know when he entered Mecca, اذهبوا فأنتم الطلقاء Go, you're all free. Those people who insulted him and did everything you probably all know. It's manners. What impress you should about the Rasul number one, his manners. His manners. It's legendary. Subhanallah. And she said, وَكَانَ بَعِيدًا عَنِ السَّيِّئَاتِ He was way far from committing any sin. Committing any sin. لَمْ يَنْتَقِمْ لِنَفْسِهِ Never retaliate for himself. Never. She said, لَمْ لَمْ is not, never. Have done that. And he never hit a person, let alone a child. وَلَمْ يَضْرِبْ غُلَامًا وَلَا أَمَةً وَلَا خَادِمًا He never hit a child or a slave woman or a servant. بَلْ لَمْ يَضْرِبْ حَيْوَانًا Not even hit an animal. وَلَمْ يَرُدُّ سَائِلَ And he never ever did not give someone asking him. Even if he had nothing. With a smile. With a nice word. That's who he is. Alayhi salatu wassalam. We don't even move our lips to say alayhi salatu wassalam. Man nasiya salata alayhi faqad nasiya tariqa u dalla tariqa hu min al jannah. The person who does not send salam to Rasul alayhi salatu wassalam, he lost the path to Jannah. And we don't even, we're too, too, please forgive me, we're lazy to even say alayhi salatu wassalam. I'm looking at you, I want to see a, a mouth moved. I'm not talking about the people who are making masks, wearing masks. But keep saying it, you should hear it. You should remind the person next to you to say it. Alayhi salatu wassalam. This is our prophet. This is, I just gave you literally a drop in a bucket. This is just a drop of who he is. Learn, make Ramadan an opportunity to every single day, families, or you in the MSA, after Maghrib, when you pray your fast, five minutes, five minutes, learn about one thing about him. One thing, every day, every day, every day. No way you will not change, no way you will not change, or at least in your list of dua to Allah, Ya Allah, make me follow his footsteps. Make it, I can't do this, I am not this, but you are able to change me. Do that, my sisters and my brothers. Allah gave us, and I said this to the ladies before, Allah gave us a lot of treasures, but we have left it as Muslims. As Sayyidina Umar said, نحن قوم أعزنا الله بالإسلام فابتغينا الإسلام في غيره فأذلنا الله We are a nation that Allah honored us by Islam. We chose dignity and honor somewhere else and we were abased. You, in case you wonder why we are, we are as a Muslims. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha ila ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathira. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who listen to the word of admonition. 
myself number one and to follow it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower us with the love of Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam the real love not the love of words but the love of action may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins may Allah give us subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the life to live to Ramadan to see Ramadan to fast Ramadan to do the Qiyamah of Ramadan to give Ramadan its due right and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Rabbi Ameen for everyone in this room for everybody we know for all the Muslims that we get to Ramadan and finish Ramadan and we will be completely forgiven Ya Rabbi Ameen Jazakumullahu Khayran Assalamu Alaikum Bismillah Walhamdulillah Wassalatu Wassalamu Ala Rasulillah I have a question from a young a very young woman who just approached me and said, please read this question in the question and answer. So she wanted everyone to hear it. And I'm so glad she had the courage to write it and to ask to be read in public. I am from a Muslim country. And my parents are Muslim. And my parents are Muslims too. I want to wear hijab and be covered. But my parents don't want me to do though. What should I do? I'll read it again because I wanted to pierce your heart. I'm from a Muslim country. This is a 17, 16. I don't think she is older than that. I'm from a Muslim country, and my parents are Muslim. And I want to wear hijab. And my parents does not want me to do that. Subhanallah. This is a real phenomena. This is real. This is not a one case. You hear it every now and then. This you see it in, unfortunately, a lot of our Muslim community, where you see the youth. We all complain about the youth. The number one issue that we complain about and is like we are losing our youth. Our youth are not connected with Allah. Our youth are distracted. Here you go. That's a youth, a she, who wants to do the most difficult decision any woman will do. And those of you who wear hijab, you know what I'm talking about. I would love to talk to the parents afterward in private if you are in the audience so we don't expose people. But I want them to ask themselves these two questions. Why don't you want her to do that? What you will tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment when he will ask you? And he said, why did you be in her path to obey me? Hijab is an obligation, my brothers and sisters. Call it what you want to call it. Get excuses what you want to do. But it's fact. It's there. It's in the Quran. It's in the Sunnah. It is there. Why don't I want this young soul, beautiful heart, to grow up with the obedience of Allah? What will she lose if she had her hijab on? When are we going to be moving past this feeling that if I am a practicing Muslim, then I am not be able to achieve. And if I can ask anyone in this room, especially the sisters, I can, some I know you very well. Those of you who don't know me, I'm a practicing obstetrician and gynecologist. I, and I hate the word I, but I need the parents to hear this. And I trained before September 11, and when September 11, I was in training. The only Muslim, they've never seen a hijabi woman before. They even, they used to look at me and say, what's your religion? Why, honestly, are you a nun? Exactly. Why, nothing happened. Trained in the best, the fifth medical school in the US. And it did not stop because I was wearing hijab. And the final was me and another blonde woman. And everyone was telling me, they will not take you. This is, I heard this from Muslims. They said they will not take you because OBGYN at that time was extremely competitive. And, and I said that nobody will give it to me except Allah. If he wants to give it to me, he will give it to me. And the rest is history. No, a'udhu billah. No, I'm not doing it. I need the parents to hear this. Don't compromise your deen for dunya. Do you think she will not get accepted to Harvard? Do you want me to show you the picture of people I know they finished Harvard? Woman, beautiful. Even in the Biden administration, there is a woman who wears hijab and a proper full hijab. Some of you may have seen it, seen her. She's from, originally from Pakistan. What is the issue? Why not? Why do I allow my daughter, and I'm speaking, you can feel me with a lot of passion and sadness. Why do I allow my daughters to be on the beach? 
and to be in the clubs, and I have no problem with that. And then when this young heart wants to obey Allah, you come to parents and say no. And I will say this last word because I don't want to take the... And I say, you better have a very good answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are standing in front of him, and he will ask you, وَكُلُّهُمْ آتِيهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَرْدَ Everyone will come to Allah as an individual. So please say yes and help her. And I will give my phone number to this girl and to keep her strong. And I will say to her, do it. Even if your parents said no. And Allah will never let you down. Comment. I don't know if you heard the question. So two Muslims, and I'm assuming they are two young Muslim, a man and a woman, wants to marry. And the parents say no because they are not the same ethnicity background. And I'm not surprised because if you go to the Horizon magazine and you look at the matrimonial and look at the request, it tells you a lot. It tells you a lot of that. The answer is, I will say one word and I leave the rest. Ibadillah taqullah. Servants of Allah have taqwa of Allah. Help people to practice their deen. And don't be the obstacle. There is so many obstacles outside for all these young people. You know it all. All of you know what are we facing as Muslims. I'm not talking about politics. I'm talking about us internally with all the temptations and all the things. And now you come as a Muslim and become another obstacle. That's going to be very hard. Alayhi salatu. We'll move on to our next question. Inshallah, I am confident that I can fast during Ramadan. However, because of my pregnancy, my husband is worrying and asking me not to fast. How should I react to this? Thank you. <laughs> this is by default. <laughs> so pregnancy and fasting, scholars differ. As Do you look at it as, like Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas basically said, she is like, she is like somebody who cannot fast, and then she doesn't. And some people says it's according to the ability. This is what I tell my patients. You divide it according to three things. Is she a healthy pregnancy, healthy woman, and a healthy baby? The answer is try. I never say don't. And I never say yes, for sure you can. People are different. And even if it's a completely healthy pregnancy, people are different. And I say, listen, it's a rukhsa from Allah. It's a permission. Try it and see. If there is any possibility of difficulty, I'm not talking about harm. Talk about difficulty, she gets dizzy, she cannot function, then you know what? Take the rukhsa, take the permission. In Allah, yuhibbu an tu'ta rukhsa kama yuhibbu an tu'ta azaima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that we, Muslims, take the permissions, like fasting, not fasting and travel, the same way he likes us to take his orders and obligations. So that's the case if she's completely healthy. If she is not healthy, there's a complication, high-risk pregnancy, case by case, there is few cases where I said, nope, you cannot fast. For example, if she's vomiting all the time. For example, if it's a, we call it IUGR, the baby is very small, it's not growing, she's not gaining weight. And if she starts fasting and starts losing weight, that's when she stops fasting. So it's case by case, but it's not categorically yes, and it's not categorically no. Uh, so basically the question is, in a non-Islamic, and I will add, and please forgive me, even in the Muslim countries these days, if you go to Muslim countries, and I'm talking, I lived there, I'm not saying this, and I lived there not a long time ago when I studied. Uh, absolutely, and Valentine's Day, and then, uh, um, it's not coming to me. No, actually, the, the, the last, uh, the, in October, what is the name of the, Halloween, exactly, yeah, which is, anyway. So, Rasulullah you all probably know the meaning of the hadith, I don't recall exactly, but the meaning of, there will come a time where if you see the, the Jews and the Christians go into a small hole in the wall, you will follow. So this is natural. When we ever look at problems, let's first accept it. Meaning, doesn't mean accept, it's okay. But it's there, don't brush it. That's number one. And is it nice and cool? Come on in. I mean, you walk in, the, in, in, Chris, in December and you see all these beautiful homes and they are all with beautiful lights and then the tree and then the, and everybody's talking about it. Right. If I have not engraved in my child from the age and four and five and six 
the identity of a Muslim, it's not going to happen when he's 15 and 16. These things to be different, and I said this when we talked to you, the uh, sisters, you need to engrave in your child when he's two and three and four. I always say this to the mothers. Your three and four-year-old or your seven and eight cannot wear anything because when she becomes a balagh, an adult, it's not a switch and you will turn it off. And tomorrow you expect her to, to dress completely modest. It's not going to happen. This has to come from the beginning. Before that, you need as parents to have this in, in you, that you are strong in your faith and you are proud of who you are. And you see it, which I really find it extremely astonishing. You see the Jews, and I work with a lot of Jews, they do not worry about the Christmas at all. And everybody knows. How do I know? Because who works in the Christmas day? It's either the Muslims or the Jews. Why we Muslims have this problem? This is my, my question to everybody. I think we need to be comfortable, as I said it before, in our skin and who we are. Fadlalna, Allah has chosen us. And why do you want to be like everybody else? Having said that, you need to give uh, an alternative. You need to make Eid the most celebrated. Gifts, cakes, everything, and even decorate. I have friends who decorate their homes exactly the same because it's an, a sign of celebration. And I am, in my religion, doesn't tell me don't celebrate. It tells me celebrate one, two, and three, and four. And I will celebrate one, two, and three, and four. And a lot of dua, a lot of dua. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. What should I do or what should one do in cases when a Muslima needs to see a doctor in an emergency and there is no female doctor? An example would be during giving birth or other cases. That's an easy one, alhamdulillah. <laughs> Not controversial. I mean, this, scholars have covered this. You need to know this basics in, uh, in, in fiqh. Necessity makes hal haram halal. So anytime I'm in a situation, and the necessity means necessity. I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat it and color it, but necessity. So here I am going for example, coming to labor and delivery. Like there's certain places where you don't have a physician. Or let's say you came in here to um, Colombia and then you're pregnant and guess what? You ended up with having labor and then you go up, show to labor and delivery and the on-call person is a, as a man. That's it. Because if you're not gonna see the man, what's gonna happen? You're gonna end up, they will not let you in the, in the hospital. You have to sign and they have to leave and then you will probably deliver somewhere else and that's, you're exposing yourself to danger and the baby to danger. So this applies. There's a case of necessity, it's not a choice, I don't have another option, and that's it. And then I can explain to that to them, and I have seen it in throughout all my career, if you really explain that as much as, yani the, in delivery of course there's issues, but again, respecting your privacy res as much as possible. But anytime there is a necessity, for example, my Muslim patients, and I say, even in the office, I tell her, if you're gonna need, if you want epidural, I cannot guarantee you a, a, a woman, because that's a schedule, I have no control over it. However, and I explain this to her, I will talk to them, that they cover you as much as possible, only the area that they need. But learn, this is the beauty of Islam, that there's always solutions for, for cases. And may Allah make it easy for everyone. Jazakumullah khair. So the question of hijab, the fact the question is asked, I'm really happy. Because if I want to read it again, can you explain why we are wearing hijab? So immediately come to your mind, this is a, probably a woman who is not, but she said, no, when I get asked, I can't answer, I am wearing hijab because I'm told by Allah. This statement, it needs to be framed. And then she said, sometimes I feel, yes, I understand, but why should we wear modest and why I need to cover the hair, um, specifically the hair? So let's start by the, the beginning. We as Muslims, and, and I really appreciate what uh, Sheikh Suleiman has been saying and uh, Dr. Hakim is saying, is basically we need to go to literally to the basics. I always say this to myself before anyone, why I am here on this earth? This is the first question. Why did he put us here? What does he want from me where I am going? So why I am here, right, as a human being, worship Allah, loves Allah, knows Allah, you all know this. So come to the hijab. Number one, he told me. 
This is the first line. He said so. قالوا سمعنا وأطعنا. They said we hear and we obey. And all of us, men and women, brothers and sisters, we need to get to this point where the first reason is because he told me. And who is he? Who is he needs a whole lecture, a whole conference. Is not anybody else. Is not my friend. Is not my neighbor. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My creator. My beloved. The one who gave me everything. The one who sees me. The one who I beg him when I need something. The one who I'm going to stand in front of him. Let alone the one who will decide where I'm going at the end. So that's number one. Number two, come. You put it in your question. The modesty. I call Islam, of course, I have to bring things from my profession, is a religion of prevention. It's not a religion of treatment. Meaning, in medicine, why did we get the, va the, the COVID vaccine? So we can be here today and we are not wearing masks. That's prevention. Otherwise, we're going to be still, Allah knows for how long. Islam looks at society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows us, knows what we have. فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا Allah, when he created us, give, gave us the ability or not the inclination to do good and to do bad. He knows what our inclination will be. What's the prevention? We need Allah want when he looks at us, he wants this earth, his creations, to live in decency, to live with a moral conduct, to live in the way to please him, to live to flourish this earth, coming to the hijab. Look at the opposite. And I don't have to explain. Look at society around us, where the hijab is even not there. Modesty is not there. Again, I'm in the professional world, and I see it every day. Where are we ending? Where are we ending? Right? And look at the time of Rasul, right? For 10 years, if not 13 years, there's only two recorded cases, if not a three, of and again, la haya afuddin, of intimate relationship outside marriage. Isn't that amazing? This is a human beings. They are the same because they had the, the morality in them and they know Allah said no. And all the beginnings and at the end, as Rasul said, al aynu tazni wal udnu tazni, that the eyes commit zina. And the ear commit prevention. Part of the prevention is the dress code of the woman. The dress code of the woman. Allah created us in a way that the woman is beautiful and the men get attracted to the woman. That's natural. That's his creation. To, to save the earth so we can have children and continue. And at the same time, he said, don't show it except in the proper channels. That's basically what it is. Hijab is to cover the hair because it's one of the most beautiful parts of the woman. Cover. I always ask, what will you lose when you cover your hair? What will you lose? Wallahi, nothing. If anything, respect. Wallahi, allahu. Respect. They, all, they look at you as a woman. They look at you as a human being. They respect you more. And why not? Why not? I think we need to little bit take time, pull back. Don't be influenced by what you are seeing, all the junk that they're outside. And just think of it. And enough, it, Allah told me, I'm pleasing him. It's protecting me. I am being more respected. I can tell you stories from now till tomorrow morning. Just do it. Modest protection save humanity, and save morality. So the question is, a non-Muslim patient is dying and you held his or her hand and make a dua for them. So can we make a dua for a non-Muslim? Start from the basics. Can we do or not? The answer is yes, except المغفرة. if they passed away and they are non-Muslims, we cannot ask Allah to forgive them because Allah said it in the Quran. وَمَا كَانَ اسْتِغْفَارُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لِأَبِيهِ إِلَّا عَنْ مَوْعِدَةٍ وَعَدَهُ إِيَّا فَلَمَّا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ أَنَّهُ عَدُوٌّ لِلَّهِ تَبَرَّأَ مِنْ إِنَّ إِبْرَاهِيمَ لَأَوَّاهٌ حَلِيمٌ مُنِيبٌ It's Allah explained in this verse that Sayyidina Ibrahim asked forgiveness for his father. 
But then when he knew his father was an enemy to Allah, meaning a non-Muslim, after he died, tabarra amin. He did not do this anymore. So can I make a, a dua to a non-Muslim? My answer, please make a dua for every non-Muslim you see that Allah guide them. And I really mean it. Every non-Muslim around you is a potential Muslim. Sayyidina Umar was kafir. And look what happened. All the Sahaba were kuffar. So absolutely. Now what you going to make the dua for that person? Ya Allah, ar-rahmah. Wa rahmati wasi'at. Kulla shay. Allah said that. My rahmah engulf everything. Yes. Ya Allah, make it easy for them. Ya Allah, not taqha shahada. If I was there, I'll ask this person to say it after me. You never know. And through you, Allah saved a, a, a soul from the hellfire, like a Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, with a young Jewish man, when he finally said, his father told him, say after Abel Qasim, say what he is saying. And he said, Alhamdulillah, Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam, the word me, Alhamdulillah, that he enabled me to save a soul from the hellfire. So absolutely there is, don't be too strict. I, this is, I'm finding some questions are very, don't do that. Don't do that. Always be a key for khair. Always be a key of goodness. Don't look at the people around us as they are less than us. A'udhu billah. You don't know when, how they will die. And, and I always remember this, the statement of Sayyidina Umar when he used to say, Kullu nasu afqahu minka ya Umar. Everybody knows better than you. And I say this to myself. Everyone is better than you. But why is that? I don't look down at people and then I struggle to become even better. Ya Rabbi Amlashan. What I will say is what the Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam said, Ya ma'ashara al-sabab tazaw alaykum bilba'a fa man lami satu'a fal yasum. Young men get married. And if you cannot, then fast. So this is number one goes to the parents. When, and I say this to all my friends. When your son comes and now your daughter comes and says, Mom, I want to get married. Get them married. Help them to get married because otherwise you know what will happen. That's number one. Number two, communities can help. We have actually in St. Louis, yeah, Umar, we do have this now where we have a couple of the sisters, they took the initiative and they actually made a matrimonial committee and they do a, a gathering. And as it's Islam, everything is Islamic way, right? They come in, they, they, the, the singles send their names, men and women, and then they get them together with like a gathering and then they let them meet each other. There's nothing wrong with that. Because we need to facilitate the halal. We need to help. To, we need to make halal easy. Because haram is extremely easy. It's everywhere. And we need as a community, as parents, as elderly, as leaders, is to help to make the halal easy. So what I would recommend for all the communities, alhamdulillah, this was, I was not involved in this. as other sisters. And it actually came from sisters and just to go and do it, and then use the other. There's also Muslim uh, apps these days. Use the Muslim apps. There's nothing wrong with that, because the app is just like introduction. But use it, and take it, and ask Allah for istikhara. He will guide you. Make sure you put the standards that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah make it easy.